So we have a project that has a master branch, and then we created an additional branch for building the storyboard. What's going to happen next? So our boss just told us that we need to stop working on this feature and immediately begin working on a separate feature. Problem is, our code for the UI isn't completed, so we actually need to go back to a working state of our application and create the feature off of that. Master right now is a workable state of the project. It could be built, it could be ran, and it is ultimately what we want to create this new feature off of. So let's navigate from our current branch to the, a new branch. So to do that, we need to actually change branches first. So we go up to source control and notice right now we're on storyboard implementation branch. Right under new branch is a ability to switch to branch. Let's select that. And if we had said new branch there, we would have been making a new branch off of the storyboard implementation branch, right? Correct. And your goal is to go back to master so we can make another branch off of master. Exactly. So let's navigate to master and we can select that by selecting local branches, master. Notice that local branches are the branches you have on your local machine. Origin, it contains the branches that are on your GitHub repository. So let's select the master branch on the local repository, click switch, and notice that our UI changes have disappeared. Just like Dale just said, we want to create the branch off of this branch, master. If I go up to source control, new branch, this will create a new branch with all the changes on the branch that we currently are in. So if I had done it off a of storyboard implementation and then created a new branch there, we would have gotten all the UI branch changes that master doesn't contain. But since master's in a workable state, let's do it off of master and let's create a new branch that says, um, say functionality. This branch basically will take our print statements and make it in a convenient function to say whatever we want to say. So let's create a new branch Notice it doesn't look any different than master. And you can right now think of this as a snapshot of master. And let's create a new function called func say, then text, which takes in a string and simply prints out what we were told to say. That is all the feature that this re is needed. So with that, let's make a commit. And before we do that, how about we use our say there? Let's replace our prints with like a single say on. So let's just say the... hello world. Yep. So basically I am telling our code to say hello world. I don't care how our code actually does it. They can print to the console or they can ultimately use the UI that we have implemented. With that functionality implemented, let's go up to source control, commit view controller and let's appropriately give a commit message here and let's just say implemented say functionality and code cleanup and before we leave this this is the first time we're seeing additions and removals in the screen above so we can see that say didn't exist in the previous version, it does exist in the new one. And then the two prints were removed and they have been replaced with a call to say. Right. So with that, let's actually commit our code. And before I do that, since I have no more codes to commit, code to commit, I'm actually gonna also push to our remote at the same time, just to save me an extra step of actually having to go to source control push. And since this branch didn't previously exist, it's gonna create this branch on GitHub as right. well. Right, so let's even prove that. Branch storyboard implementation, and there's only two branches, master and storyboard implementation, no say functionality. So I'm gonna commit one file and push. And now that it's uh, pushing, right after it's done pushing, we will have this new branch on GitHub. So let's refresh our browser and see that it's there. And I accidentally clicked storyboard implementation from master, but we now have, we now have three branches 
on our repository, say functionality, storyboard implementation, and master. Master is our base, you could essentially think of it as, our working copy of the repository. Say functionality is our functionality to print out information and storyboard implementation contains the UI. So while we're here in say functionality, go ahead into the hello world folder, hello world, and into the view controller and we can see the new code that we just added. And if I go to branch say functionality and change it to storyboard implementation, we'll actually see our print statements are back with our IB outlet that we had added in that branch. And that's because you could think of branches as independent snapshots or copies of the repository with added code on top of it. So these were co essentially copies of master where we added code on top of it independent of another branch. With that in mind, let's go back to our Xcode and let's say that I'm in say functionality branch right now, but let's say I wanna actually change branches to go back to the storyboard implementation. I can do that by selecting say functionality, going to switch to branch, and actually switching to storyboard implementation. And our UI is now implemented in this, but without our say functionality. So I now we now have three branches, master and these two others. And you said that our boss wanted us to add this say functionality and we think we've finished that task and we ultimately want to merge it into master. But before we do that, what do we often do? We'll often do what's called pull requests. Pull requests allow the other developers on your team to actually review and comment on your code, whether changes should be made, whether there's a blaring mistake, or whether that the syntax is just slightly off than the team standard. So to create a pull request, we could go to our Hello World repository on GitHub. And notice, since we have recently pushed these two branches, they are both saying compare and pull request. You could think of a pull request as simply asking other developers to look at your code, and once they approve it, it could then be merged into our master branch. If we had pushed the branch long time ago and now just want to create a pull request, we could go down to our new pull request, select it, and then we get this screen that's asking us to compare changes and we'll notice base master compare master. So let's change that to say functionality. And what this is saying is we want to merge say functionality into our base master. It will take your commit messages and make a handy little convenient summary of them up here, implemented save functionality and code cleanup. The reason why they put that there is because we only had a single commit message, so they're just labeling the open pull request that name. I'm gonna take that out by copying and pasting that, cutting and pasting it, and I'm gonna change the functionality to save functionality because I don't believe the commit message should actually be the title. With that, we can navigate down a little bit and we can actually see the changes that this pull request encompasses. This will be a cumulative status of all the commits that were changed. If you made five changes in five different commits, it would show you every single change right here, right now. With this and with us actually looking at this and saying, yes, this is exactly what I wanna merge into master, meaning I want master to look just like this, I'm gonna navigate up and I'm gonna click create pull request. Once I do that, everyone on your team or everyone actually committing to this repository will get an email typically that says, hey, a pull request has been created. A pull request allows people to actually go to your commits by going up to next to conversation and clicking commits see all the commits that you've done that are separate on this branch or going to file changes and they can actually make a comment cool change and they add a single comment a review means that they're going to actually review all the code approve it at that point and essentially let the person who put the pull request up know that it's good. 
So I'm going to navigate back to conversation. I'm going to say everyone has looked at my code at this point. Everyone approves of this change. They now want this to be inside master. And remember, master is actually the workable state of the app. So everyone has approved this, said it's workable. Let's merge it. So all we have to do to merge it is click merge pull request. It now asks what our commit message wants to be on the master branch because the master branch won't actually see all the changes that you have done. They will see this merge master instead. So I'm going to click confirm pull request, not confirm pull request, confirm merge. It says merging. It says pull request successfully merged and closed. You're all set. The safe functionality branch cannot, can be safely deleted and it even gives us an option. The reason why it can be safely deleted is because what was implemented in save functionality now actually exists in master. So save functionality is essentially duplicate at this point. It is up to you. I've seen both done in the actual industry, whether you want to leave the branch or delete it. Some people delete it. Some people leave it depending on if they ever want to go back to something that they've done in the past. I'm going to leave it. But if I go back to Hello World Repository, go to Master, Hello World, Hello World. And remember, we just merged in save functionality. Navigate to View Controller. Notice what's here in our View Controller. It says Branch Master. And we now have our save functionality here. So with that in mind, let's create a pull request for our storyboard implementation and actually merge that into master. And we can do that by navigating back to Hello World. Can I, can I, um, I want to check something before you did that. So all of this pull request and merging we just did is on GitHub. Correct. And so my master branch in my Xcode project doesn't know about this yet. Right. And if we go back to our Xcode, notice in source control, and if we navigate to master, Notice the code. It doesn't have our, our say functionality. So let's let's actually pull or update what master is based on what's on GitHub. So a pull essentially retrieves from our online repository the changes that it exists and implements it in our own code. So I could go up to here to source control, go down to pull, pull remote changes off of origin master. I'm gonna click pull. It says pull successful. We now have our say functionality in this. So, um, so now essentially going forward, we can ignore that branch, which was the say functionality. We master is up to date. We've merged say functionality in, and you were about to merge in the UI changes, and we and we've been doing this um, in GitHub. So since we've already seen it in GitHub, how about we do the merging here in Xcode instead? Perfect. So let's go up to source control. And right now I'm sitting on master. I can say merge from branch. And then I could say storyboard implementation and click on the merge. And it will bring up changes. These are the things that are going to happen should we do it. And here's where we could look if there are any conflicts. And it, will it tell me if there are conflicts? It will tell you if there's conflicts. It will actually say here in the code that there's a conflict. And it will even ask you what you want to take. So if we look here, we have a little switch. And notice a switch is pointing in either direction. A switch can easily be turned one way. I could say that. And notice what it did to my code. On the left-hand side is what we'll finally get. But if I select the left toggle, it will say save functionality. It's because Git recognizes what's new and actually tries to merge them together. And that's what makes Git such a powerful tool. So it recognizes that the save functionality was created after our storyboard implementation and recognizes that the save functionality has deleted the two print statements. So And, and replaced it with the say. So merging here in Xcode without doing a pull request and then and then merging, you know, by kind of an approval process is something that I often do here in Xcode when it's just me developing and I might be doing kind of a 
a, a, a branch where I'm creating a piece of functionality and then when I'm sure of it, I merge it back in and kind of skip the pull request step. Is there an advantage or disadvantage? There's not a disadvantage, but I like in a team setting for everyone to do pull requests because I like to be contextually aware of what my other teammates are doing. So say another teammate has been working on this giant UI change. I like to actually see that implemented before he merges it in because what happens if we were both touching the same code and we both did the same thing? It would be counterproductive for both of us to merge the same thing in. So it gives me an update of where everyone is, what the state of the app actually is. But like Dale said, this ability gives you the functionality to do it right inside Xcode, but the other users don't actually see what was merged into master. They could see the history in Git, and by the way, we can actually merge this in, so I'm gonna merge this in now. Yep, and, and I think a thing to point out here now that you're merging it in here, is this merge is not on GitHub yet. Correct. So we would need to push it to GitHub for it to be there. So just like when we did it on GitHub, we needed to pull it to get it here. If we merge here, we're going to have to push it to GitHub for it to be visible there. So just like we've done um, commits and then pushed it, we can do source control, push, push the master, push successful, and now if I navigate to hello world view controller inside GitHub, it now has all the updated code. And recognize the fact that hello world, GitHub actually recognized that we merged that pull in, that branch in, and so it got rid of that a little pop-up that said compare and merge request, pull request. So with those changes actually in place, let's go up to source control and go down to history. History is a great ability of Git to actually show you the changes or the snapshots of each commit. So notice these are all the commits that we have done on this project with the commit messages and we can even see the modified files that happened at that instance. So I can even see that our IB outlet was added to our view controller on the last commit that was merged into master. With that information, I can now say, well, we both have the UI changes in place and our save functionality in place. I no longer want to print out to the console. I now want to set our label to the text instead of actually printing it off. And now since we had two different functionalities merged into master, we now get the added ability of now actually implementing our code with that in mind. So... We just now made a change, so let's go ahead and commit this change. And notice I'm actually committing this on master. Like I said, this isn't typically done, but in this fashion, it's okay. And let's create a message for that. Um, updating label. And, no. and before you hit that, I'm glad you checked that box. So if we did commit and we didn't check that box, we'd still have to be pushing it. If um, if you check that box, then we're going to do a commit and we're going to push. So th there is this bit where you got to keep track in your head. Where is the current state of the code after these commits and, and, and merges? If you do it on GitHub, they're on GitHub and you need to pull them to the client. If you do them on the client, you got to remember to push them out to GitHub. So now that it's pushed, let's bump over to uh, GitHub and just take a look to see that our change is there in master. And there we are setting the text on the label.